there, I heard there's something going on across campus too today, so I'm not sure what that could be, but thanks for being here. How's everybody doing? We're working on it. How about that? Is that fair? So let me just, uh, I'll start by uh, kind of just talking about um, some of the things that are going on with us offensively, if that's okay, and, uh, and then we'll take some questions. So um, proud of uh, starting with a winner that we had uh, overall. I thought the guys have been killing it in the weight room. I think their commitment level uh, is at an all-time high. Uh, I've loved the gains that we've made uh, both in our twitchiness and, and speed development as well as our overall strength of, of what we're trying to get accomplished in the weight room. So that's been incredibly positive. You take that into uh, kind of getting ready for spring ball and, and meeting time and things like that. Um, the guys have been incredibly attentive. I think, you know, year one is, is a lot about getting to know each other, uh, trying to figure it all out, where the pieces fit, who goes where, uh, all those kind of things. And, and, and I think what gets lost in translation sometimes is a little bit of the detailed work that it takes to be really elite at what you're doing. And uh, so we've been able to kind of get more into digging into the details of every single position, um, whether that's in the passing game or, or running game, and kind of reteach it. But them having another level of understanding, if you will, from just kind of assignment football uh, to understanding how we can really push this thing to the next level. And that's really the goal, I think, for us offensively. I think there was, uh, as the season went along last year, I, I felt like we grew up a little bit, like we, we got better, we, we gained momentum. Uh, we've got to pick up on that, and it's got to be really, really important for these guys to understand that uh, we're in a position, I believe, offensively uh, to kind of step up and really help this football team be really, really elite. So um, with that, I'll uh, open it up to what you guys might want to talk about. Hey, Mike Wilson, Alexander from The Advocate. Um, to expand on that maybe, where specific areas offensively do you want to evolve here as you head into year two? Yeah, I think, you know, it starts with, I mean, well, there's nowhere we don't want to evolve. I guess that's the easiest answer to your question. Um, but I think in particular, when, it, when I speak about, like, digging into the details better, you know, uh, spacing in the passing game, um, understanding line movements and stunts and, and different things that people are doing defensively to try to take our run game away from us. Um, you know, being able to block movement up front, I guess, is the, the easiest way probably to explain that. We got to do a better job with that. And then in particular, passing game-wise, just it, it's so critical that everybody understands, you know, where their airspace is um, in what we're trying to do so that it, it puts this, the multitude of stresses on the defense as we possibly can um, so that we can get people in space and get them the football in their hands. And then there's been kind of an emphasis, at least uh, from our, po our part in the, uh, in the passing game, to, to get more catch and run balls, if you will. Uh, so getting, have, running a little bit more scheme-wise where we can get the ball in our skill guys' hands with their ability to turn up field instead of have their back to the goal line catch the ball and be able to kind of burst into, into open space that hopefully if we understand spacing, we can help create. Hey coach, Pat Timlin, NBC 33, Fox 44 here in Baton Rouge. I was curious, um, how are the new tight ends looking, um, Jackson and Mac, and what have you kind of known or seen from them in the early stages of camp? Yeah, incredibly pleased with those guys. You know, um, they're, you know, I mean, the old saying is, is true of, of any, especially early and rolly, they're drinking through a fire hose and, and having a hard time keeping up mentally with what we're doing right now, but that's natural. And, and you know, but as far as ability and, and what I think they're going to be able to lend to our overall effort as, an, as a total offense, uh, moving in a really positive direction. And um, they're both, I think, going to play uh, some factor in what we do in the fall. So it's exciting to see those guys develop. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, Glenn West with Go247. Just uh, if you could expand on them a little bit, just what, what does each of them do well and just kind of how do you see them fitting into to what you guys are doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mac is probably a little bit farther along physically um, in that, you know, I think he can give us that physical presence um, that we lacked at times in the run game uh, a year ago. So he can give us some some good good things in there. It's not that he can't run and catch the ball, but I'd say right now that's his strength um, where he's going to be able to kind of leap in front of the crowd, if you will, and, and, and help immediately. Uh, Jackson is, 
a guy who probably needs a year in the weight room to really get physically in a position where he can block uh, the defensive ends that we have to face in this league. Um, but he is way up on the scale as far as running and catching the ball and making plays in space. So I think there's a good yin and yang and a compliment to those two guys that can obviously lend some support to Mason Taylor and, and, and some of the other guys in the room and, and give us a, a pretty dynamic group in there. A follow-up on Jackson, I presume you probably recruited him at Cincinnati. So how was that decision getting him to come here and play for you guys? At yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, when uh, things happened the way they happened and there was a change, obviously, in what was going on at, at Cincinnati, it, it gave us an opportunity to kind of crack the door open a little bit and have a conversation. And we were at the point where we had decided that we needed to take a second tight end uh, in last year's class, and it kind of timed up almost perfect where he was available and we were in need and, and uh, it was great to already have that relationship established with the family and, and, uh, and, and know him inside and out and what he could bring to the program if we got the opportunity to get him here. Uh, Shay Dixon with On3. Um, I know he's not here right now, but your thoughts on Camorian Pimpton and uh, what kind of player he is and, and what he could be maybe even in year one. Yeah, I mean, he here's, you know, he is... Uh, in the process of just killing it in shot and discus, uh, which speaks to his explosiveness as an athlete. Um, there's a lot of things there that I can't wait to get my hands on. Uh, that's probably the best way to describe it. We'll see exactly where he is. You know, we, we've been sending him material and things like that, trying to keep him caught up with what we're doing install wise. So he doesn't feel like he's falling behind and, but there's, there's definitely some situational football and some things like that, that I think you're going to see him, uh, in, in his abilities that he brings to the table uh, help us in, in some of those critical moments. Hey, how you doing? Adam Nay with WWL-TV in New Orleans. Just wondering, what, what's the next progression for two guys, Jaden Daniels, number one, and then Mason Taylor, number two? What's the next step for, for those two? Yeah, I th you know, let's start with Jaden. I think you know, Jaden's ability to uh, push the ball down the field consistently um, I think is something that we've worked very hard on this spring. He's worked on it over the winter. Uh, he's worked on it even when he's been away from here. So um, we want to be a threat in the vertical passing game. And, you know, that takes some aggressiveness at the quarterback position. And, and we want him to step into that role and not be afraid to kind of let it fly. Um, so we've encouraged him to do that. He's done an unbelievable job here early in, in the spring. Uh, what are we, practice, what is this, seven, six? Anyway, about halfway through, and uh, really, really like the progress that we've made there. And obviously, we've got some dynamic guys that can go get it on the outside. So that, that hopefully bodes well for us being a little bit more explosive offensively. That's going to be a big key for us. Um, Mason, I think, with his opportunity to kind of have another year in our program and, and in the weight room in particular, is going to help him become a more complete player. Um, where he can help us in any down and distance situation. He's going to be the, what he was in the passing game as far as a, a, a very viable target for the quarterback and, and kind of somebody that he knows he can count on. Uh, but he's also going to be able to develop himself into a physical presence that can, can handle some of the duties that we need in the run game. Mike, to follow up on that uh, downfield passing element with Jaden, how is that something that you actually go about coaching with him? Is it as simple as, like, you need to go and do this and really, really drilling that into his head? Or, like, are there certain things that you can do from, like, a schematic or drill standpoint sure. to increase that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think more than anything, um, it's a mindset that you have to drill just like you drill any other mindset. So if you're going to be a team that is uh, a power team and you don't run power very much in practice then you're gonna it's a hard it's hard to make it come out as a play caller when it's time to to call it and I don't know that I scripted it enough in practices and, and things like so that's been the biggest adjustment it's something that you have to make yourself do quite frankly it's a lot easier to uh whoop, excuse me it's a lot easier to call another hitch route uh, knowing that it's going to be complete than it is to take a shot down the field. But as a coach, we've got to be willing to do that, and we've got to be able to practice those things every day in practice and force the ball down the field and just develop that mentality of that's how we're going to play the game. 
Coach, how have you seen the offense take steps forward this spring, last spring compared to the, I mean, this spring compared to last spring? Yeah, I mean, I think it really comes down as much as anything to the detail uh, answer that I gave a little bit earlier. I mean, I think what everybody's been able to do is now, now that we know each other, now that we, we have a good understanding of the scheme overall, uh, we've gotten a chance to really kind of dig into the ins and outs, uh, the details of what everybody needs to do. And not only that, but f- based on the different things that they're going to be faced with during the season, whether it's scheme-wise, whether it's personnel-wise, they know how we're going to game plan for that, and they can kind of prepare themselves a little bit earlier than we could a year ago for that kind of thing. Hey, Coach Cook, you're out with the advertiser. Um, how has sort of the lack of depth you guys have in the offensive line this spring, how has that sort of affected things when it comes to, you know, implementing new schemes, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, it's been a challenge. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it affects us, you know, offensively, obviously. We, we've had to move a couple guys over from the other side of the ball who, um, you know, have been here playing defensive line. They haven't been playing offensive line. So it's been a minute since they've had to do the other side of it. And uh, so that's, that's going to take a little adjustment. We've been pretty basic with our second group just to kind of let them get their feet on the ground and, and, and get used to, to, to working together a little bit more. But it's definitely a challenge. And it's something from a, you know, Coach Kelly's done an unbelievable job of, of kind of scripting practices so that, you know, the numbers have not been a factor as big as you would think they were up to this point because we've kind of spaced things around um, what we've got going on offensive line-wise and numbers-wise there. Um, and it's a balancing act, obviously. You've got to still get your work in, um, but you, don't, you know you've got, to, you've got to be mindful of the numbers that you have there at the same time. Hey, Coach, um, what can you say overall about all the new guys, like the recruits, the transfer, like Ricky and everyone? What has pleased you like the most about them so far? Just at their level of competitiveness. You know, we, we've got competitive guys in this program, and, and there's a desire for them to achieve the goal um, of graduating champions. And they go out to work every day with that attitude about them. And um, they're serious about it. They're making good decisions. Uh, they're putting themselves in, in the best position possible on and off the field for, for us to achieve that. And uh, it's fun to be around a group that, uh, that not only understands what it takes to be really good at what they do and elite at what they do, uh, but's willing to do it. Hey, Coach. Uh, just Garrett was a guy that got a lot of opportunities later down the, the road in the last couple games. Just, just how have you seen him develop in the last several months? And just what have the conversations been like with him, you know, incorporating him into this offense a little bit more? Yeah, I, th- I think having him healthy has helped, right? So, you know, a year ago he, he didn't play as much spring ball, obviously, because of, of the surgery that he had. And having him available and having him taking more reps and getting more comfortable as time's gone along has been a, obviously a really positive thing. And, and his work ethic in particular, he's a perfectionist. I love that about him. Um, he loves to dig in uh, to making sure that he's doing things the right way. And I, th- I think what's encouraging for not only him but some of those other guys, I think they've all tried to take a little bit more ownership and leadership within the offensive line room, and that in particular is, is a good thing. Hey, Coach, Peter Rodriguez from the Reveille. What have you seen from the young wide receivers, Jalen Brown and Kyle Parker, and how do they kind of fit in what's already a pretty loaded wide receiver room? Yeah, I mean, those two guys are, aren't out of place. Um, they're, they're right where they're supposed to be. So it, it's been great. I mean, those guys both have made uh, explosive plays down the field. They've made uh, contested catches. Um, again, they're, they're swimming a little bit from, you know, uh, the amount of install that we've put in and kind of forced on them. But um, those guys are two guys that I think, you know, have a good chance to, to work themselves into some really good playing time in the fall. Um, <clears throat> the, with Dre and Kayshawn gone, I mean, how have Brian Thomas and Kyron Lacey, who's sort of next up beyond Malik? I, I love what Kyron's done all spring, and, and I think BT has – Equally, kind of, they know there's some catches available, and those guys have competed every practice and really kind of shown that. Listen, you, I'm ready. I, I'm 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 that dude, and uh, so that's been really nice to see. Those guys have both 
really tried to kind of, if there is a void left by Kayshawn and, and Jure, those guys have tried to step into those roles um, and be the type of uh, reliable uh, receivers that we need them to be. And I think they've both done a really good job. So it's really, really encouraging that uh, those guys have kind of taken the challenge and, and stepped into those roles very, very well. Hey, how you doing? Um, what's you've been here a year now, a little over a year. What's what stood out the most? Just coaching here, you know, offensively in the South Southeastern Conference, and then have you had to tweak any philosophical changes or anything like that with with what stood out? Yeah, um, I think what what stood out the most during the course of the season was um, there, there's no time to kind of take a deep breath. I mean, it's like hammer time every week every team can beat you every you know and, and there's been other places that I've been over the years where you may get the fourth game of the season or the third game of the season or the sixth game of the season you can kind of inhale and exhale and take a deep breath and kind of as long as we play solid football we're going to win the game and I think at this level um, that's all out the window because anybody can beat you any Saturday because they've got uh, a lot of really quality football players on their football team too. So that's probably the biggest change in in, in just understanding that uh, every week you better be at your best and uh, you better be prepared and you better be at your best. And then philosophically, I would say just understanding that alone uh, and that a lot of defensive coordinators uh, at this level, if they see the same thing twice, are pretty good at stopping it. So you better be have a flexible system that's that's multiple, uh, where you can change up looks, and maybe you're doing the same type of thing or the same philosophy around what you're doing, uh, but you're giving the defense different pictures and different looks to keep them off balance. Obviously, you know, last season you had to balance and you know the running back rotation with so many different guys, and once the, all those guys get back, I'm probably going to have to kind of do the same thing this year. How do you go back go about choosing when to use certain backs? when you have a rotation like that, so you properly kind of use them at the right moments and highlight what they do best? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you hope that, you know, the same as you do kind of with any any position that is multiple. So if you take running backs or tight ends, you, you want a complete tight end. You want a complete back, if at all possible, too, right? You want somebody who you can use in the passing game equally as well as how they run between the tackles or or whatever. So... That's a development piece that I know Coach Wilson's working really hard on with those guys, trying to make them kind of overall more complete so you don't get into specialized players in specialized places. Uh, more than you can, you know, it's, you're gonna, it's unavoidable at some point. But um, as much as we can, right, the guy who really there, – there's different guys on different days seem to have a feel for the game, wh- whether that's – you know, if, if, if the game plan revolves around uh, running uh, gap scheme plays in the run game and some guys just have a knack for understanding and running better on gap scheme plays. Some guys are better zone scheme runners. Some guys are better, right? So as much as you want to develop the whole back into as a complete a player as you can, there are going to be times where if you're heavy gap scheme in your game plan or whatever, you're going to be a back specific for that particular run. And then there's also an opportunity for somebody to get a hot hand and just be feeling it that day. And everybody can see it when it happens. And you want to continue to give that guy the ball. Okay. Thank you, guys.